Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Red Wing Shoes, located in the shops at Centerpoint in Grand Rapids at the corner of 28th Street and the Beltline. The store has everything you need for the worksite or the woods. Stop in or check them out online at redwingshoes.com. And by Mr. Musky Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskycharters.com. Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny olson Silic, and we've got an all new show for you this week. I'll introduce you to a brand new product that's helping to save our trees. It's made right here in Michigan. You wanna make sure you check that out. Jordan will take us over to Williams Gun Site for some gun maintenance tips for all of us waterfowlers out there. And Jimmy, he's been all over the map this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. I had kind of an interesting week last week, traveled all over the state of Michigan, and I'm just going to let you kind of tag along. We had varying degrees of success on these trips, but it was all kind of fun and really kind of worthwhile, I think. We're going to start in West Michigan, do a little goose hunting, then head over to the east side of the state just the following day and do some sturgeon fishing on the St. Clair River. Then two days later, head north to Petoskey to chase some big lake fish, and I tell you what, we had a good time in every single spot. You won't want to miss this week's show. Lots of good stuff. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan out of doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy, the wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air from the great lakes to the quiet stream shining like a sportsman's dream it's a love of michigan we all share michigan out of doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at CountrySmokehouse.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at G5Outdoors.com. By Hemisphere Design Works, a Muskegon manufacturer of sportsman's outdoor products for over 30 years, featuring the terrain line of hard-sided hunting blinds designed for quick setup and removal with quiet operation. For more information and other products, HemisphereDesignWorks.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. Well, in our first story this week, we're going to do something just a little bit different. I was able to do quite a bit of traveling last week, started in West Michigan, then over to the east side of the Lower Peninsula, then the northern part of the Lower Peninsula. All a lot of fun, varying degrees of success, but the first trip was just here locally to do a little goose hunting. First week of the goose season in West Michigan? Well, it has been rough. Last week, I was out with Mike Schmidt on a free wounded warrior outing, a hunt that he had donated. It's been pretty tough. Yeah. Birds have a lot of options, a lot of water in different fields and stuff, and they're not consistent at all. So, hmm. but make you kind of tough. Yeah. Tell yep. me a little bit about how long you've been doing this wounded warrior deal. This is my uh, second full year now. So I had five hunts last year, and this is my second hunt this year. So really enjoy giving back um, to the. To the vets so yeah what made you just one day just figured I'd take a buddy out or how did that start for you yeah more or less just like you said it uh just wanted to get back to the veterans that gave to us so it's been a real blessing for me Fred Boyer was our hunter today he was about 50 yards from us out in the middle of a cut grass field with some water we had large flocks coming in one almost landed one moved off another group landed just out of range but a third group was just close enough. Well, Fred did knock down a couple, and I asked Mike where these wounded warrior hunters are coming from. Um, I've had some down by the Indiana-Michigan line last year, and uh, they come from all over, actually. So 
they drive three hours, two hours sometimes. So, yeah, really a neat thing. Well, we had a couple birds down, and I asked Fred how he heard about Mike and his free offers for veterans. Um, through my friends uh, Shannon and Joe Schwenke. Oh, okay. Kind of a cool thing he's doing for vets, eh? Sure is. Well, thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for your service, too. You're welcome. So, with the morning almost gone, Fred moved a blind to see if it would help, but it didn't. <laughs> Naomi Wildrum got to run her dog today. Fred got a few birds. Overall, not a bad way to spend a morning. Well, special thanks to Mike for putting on those hunts. What a great way to give back to our military. That was on Wednesday of last week. So then Thursday found me driving across the state from Grand Haven here where I live on the west side all the way over to Algonac, which is on the north side of Lake St. Clair to do a little sturgeon fishing on the river. We hit the water with Kevin Backus at least once or twice a year. He runs several boats on this side of the state. And when he said he had an opening, well, across the state I went. So uh, we're out here on the north channel of the St. Clair River and uh, we're going to be going after some sturgeon tonight to see if we can find a few hungry ones. How do you find sturgeon in a big river like this? Pray, hope, <laughs> and throw a lot of bait down. <laughs> yeah, as I re we were here, what, a couple years ago and I caught my first one. You did, yeah. Yeah, that's it, a ton And of it fun. was a big one and it was, uh, according to you, a lot of fun and a very challenging fight. Yeah. Much more so than the uh, catfish, I, if I remember <laughs> right, that we warmed you up on. Yeah, so, so you guys uh, are just getting started with the sturgeon fishing? We are. We've been, uh, we, we just got our boats set up here in the St. Clair River system, and we've been fishing them, and our guys here at Mr. Muskie have been fishing the sturgeon throughout the season, which started uh, July 16th. So uh, we've had some good success and had some uh, fish that have, push the 70 inch mark and wow. hopefully we can find something camera worthy tonight. What do you think there young fella? What do you got? I'm yeah. hoping it's a sturgeon. Does it feel heavy? It's got some it's got some weight to it. Got some shoulders? Some shoulders for sure. Oh, you know what we don't have? Water in the live well. Pretty fast. What, 10 minutes here? Thank goodness, huh? <laughs> we don't want to get overworked. No, that was nice, and it was nice that uh, apparently I got us on a spot that has a few sturgeon. <laughs> and like I said, the sturgeon are swimming with everything else up the river. How and old is that one there? That's kind of a small one. This looks one. pretty small. It looks fairly young, I would say. These guys do a great job of making sure that the fish are well taken care of and returned as best they can. See what I was talking about with them circle hooks? Oh, yeah. Loops them right nice in the lip. Much better for the fish. And this is a nice sized fish, but the big ones can push up to 70 inches, and those are the river giants that attract the anglers here and will for at least all of September and October. This is a fun way to fish as well. The motor is off, and once anchored, it's really a relaxing way to fish. Kevin and Rick like to use crawlers, say three to five per circle hook, and about a three to eight ounce weight, and you're in business. You know, they don't, they don't get ex as exhausted when you're pulling them in the boat. You know, you got maybe a five-minute fight tops, whereas with the bigger ones, you want to let them revive a bit because, you know, you're battling for a half hour up to hour, hour plus. So, you, you know, you want to make sure to hold them in the water, make sure that they're going to go down nice and easy because the, otherwise they'll hang up on the surface and you don't want a boat to hit them or anything like that. With a healthy fish back in the water, I asked Kevin just how much he likes to move around from spot to spot. It depends actually if we're getting bites and the action seems to be good, whether they're hooking up or not is not really um, as consequential as if we're getting the action. If, you, if I've been in the spot for quite a while and we haven't seen action, then typically I'll, I'll try to move to a different spot. But a lot of times what happens is the fish come through the river and there are going to be more fish coming through. So you could sit sit tight and wait it out, okay. or you could move spots. Okay, and uh, I'm uh, guessing a slow night is no sturgeon. What's an average to good night? Um, our baseball average has been about three, and I think the most we've ever put in the boat was uh, eight or nine. Nice. Well, Brad got to check sturgeon off the list of fish he had never caught, and we did boat a handful of cats as well. This is a relaxing and fun fishing up till and after dark some nights. We never did get the big guy. But as night fell, it was still worth the trip to the St. Clair River. That's always a lot of fun uh, to get out there on the St. Clair River. I don't get to spend as much time over there as I would like. And speaking of places I wish I could spend more time, now we're going to head to the northern part of the Lower Peninsula to the town of Petoskey and Harbor Springs area and Little Traverse Bay. There's some great fishing to be had up there. If 
you have ever been to Petoskey or Harbor Springs, you know how beautiful it is. Now, I have never launched out of Petoskey before, but I was really excited to fish Little Traverse Bay with Captain Jim Musselman. We had a full boat of buddies tonight, and I was lucky enough to be tagging along. The salmon have been iffy, but the Lakers have been hot and heavy. We're, we're really getting our limits of lake trout every trip, and uh, salmon have been spotty. You know, some, some trips we get two, other trips we get seven or eight. Now they've been moving in more here in the next yeah, couple weeks, or well, yeah, okay, yeah. Once once we get some cold water back in the bay, the salmon will follow it in. Okay. And are the lake trout up here similar to down the state, where they're kind of just on the bottom, or no? They're scattered all through the water oh, column. Right. Uh, okay. We'll be fishing, in, you know, between 220 and 180 on the riggers. Okay. And how long have you been doing the charter boat thing? Mm. About 20 some years, Whoa. almost 30 years. You're getting it figured out. Oh yeah, it's a lot of changes. <laughs> Jim and his first mate, Charlie Pennington, said we would have a fish on in the first five minutes. Well, what they didn't say is that it would be about an hour till we didn't have a fish on. It was some of the best Laker fishing I've ever seen. We were already close to a six-man limit, and when Chad had a break, I asked him how this ragtag crew of anglers were here on the boat tonight. Uh, we're having a men's event tomorrow, and um, we decided that one of the guys offered to get a charter booked for tonight, and just some of us to get together, come out, have some fun fishing, but we have a breakfast tomorrow. It's a church group uh, tomorrow meeting in East Jordan, so it'll be nice. a good time. And what churches are uh, represented there? Wallen Lake Community Church and East Jordan Community Church. Okay. So, same church, two locations. And I heard you got some Yahoo for a speaker tomorrow? Yeah, a guy named Jimmy Gretzinger. <laughs> I, I've heard he's okay, but... Uh, uh, you should have got we'll the good see. speaker. Yeah, that's right. We're on a tight budget. <laughs> is this how it is all the time on the Little Traverse Bay? Yeah. <laughs> The nice. lake trout fishing is world class. That's awesome. World class is right. I was blown away at how good the fishing was. But here's the kicker. Most every port I have ever been to fishes for Lakers on the bottom with downriggers and dipsies with a spinning glow. 
Yes, you can catch them on other stuff, but that is the bread and butter. Well, not here. As you may have noticed, almost every fish was caught with an action fly, most on a spin doctor or another rotator, typically all salmon gear. We were in about 180 to 220 feet of water and catching them 40 feet down all the way to 160 all over the place. It was fast and it was furious. Little Traverse Bay has enough structure here to hold the fish apparently. It was awesome. Not the case for the salmon however. We went in shallow to find some kings and had no luck. But what a fun trip. Some fast action. And if you ever wanted a reason to visit Petoskey or Harbor Springs, well it's about as pretty as Michigan can get. And the fishing is pretty darn incredible. Here in Michigan's Out of Doors. From time to time here on Michigan Out of Doors, we like to introduce you to new products made right here in our great state. It never ceases to amaze us the ingenuity that our sportsmen and women have here in the state. In this next segment, we're going to show you a very interesting product that's helping to save the spread of disease in our trees. It's keeping some product out of our landfills and it's a great resource for sportsmen. In the past several years, Michigan forests have been host to many unwanted invasive species and diseases. Emerald ash borer, beech bark disease, and most recently, oak wilt are all a threat to the future of our trees here in Michigan. In an attempt to stop the spread of disease, there are restrictions on moving firewood within the state. And there's a new product on the market to help with those restrictions. Speedy Blaze is a patented pressed firewood. Uh, it's a hardwood product that's uh, it's pressed and then water resistant. We use a food safe sealer to seal it so that it becomes water resistant. You can take it anywhere you want. And um, you know, it starts easy, um, it's safe to cook over. You know, we've, we've kind of gone through this pro progression of we had Dutch elm disease and then we had the emerald ash borer. Now we have oak wilt the, with the Asian longhorn beetle coming. They attack popples and maples and all these other trees. So. It allowed, it was kind of a thing where we knew that firewood is getting harder and harder to move um, by the day. Most other states have much more restrictive firewood rules than we do even here in Michigan. And so there was a need to come up with a product that was movable, that was certified and, and, and to transport, um, but also that worked and, and you could start and you could cook over. And so that's kind of how the whole thing got going is making a product that people could take with them uh, wherever they were going, whether it was in the UP or out west, um, that they could make a fire at night, cook their meal if they wanted to cook a meal or roast a hot dog, um, and you know that you're doing your part to try and eliminate some of these diseases that are attacking our forest today. Because of the manufacturing process, Speedy Blaze logs are campground friendly and comply with firewood transport rules. It's 100% recycled, so we're taking a byproduct from the milling industry uh, that makes boards or cabinets, what have you, and that product would normally go to the waste, to a landfill. But what we're doing is we're recycling that product into these bricks. So it's great for us because we get to use the product, and it's great for the mills because they're not putting them in landfills that end up, you know, decomposing, producing gas, filling up our landfills. So actually, everybody wins on this on on Speedy Blaze. Basically, the Speedy Blaze brick is made up of wood fibers, so. What we do is we take these fibers, we press them together into the block. And, and we didn't invent this, it's been around for about 50 years. But what we did do is we made it water resistant. So before, if that water, any water got on it, it would just disintegrate back into a pile of, of wood fiber. We use a sealer to seal that. Again, it's a food safe, so we can still cook over it, but we use a sealer. So now, if you throw that in the back of your truck, or you're in a boat and you're going back to the woods to camp, uh, it gets wet you're perfectly fine. And the sealer, as soon as you start it, will come off of it. And again, you're safe to cook over it. Um, you know, and, and it's a nice, safe fire for you. We package and process the product right here in Alpena. Um, and then we, most of the places you're gonna find us are the standard places you would think. Uh, Jay's Sporting Goods in both location, uh, Frank's and Linwood, uh, convenience stores, um, sporting goods stores. Um, we do a four pack. Uh, is what you're normally going to see. Our four pack comes with two speedy spark starters and four bricks and that's going to burn for about four hours. Um, if you want a bigger fire you can always add more speedy blaze and the one thing with speedy blaze that you're not going to get with firewood is our BTUs are more on a block 
almost twice as much as you get in loose firewood. So for example, if you're starting a fire in your cabin or in your tent, your deer tent, you can use about half of the amount of wood with Speedy Blaze than you would with normal firewood and get the same amount of heat. Because we use a food safe sealant and we're particular about where our wood fiber comes from, Speedy Blaze is safe to cook over. If you look at some other products that are out there, that's always been the thing is that those products have chemicals in them. Ours doesn't. So again, if you want to cook the day's catch or you want to make hot dogs or what have you, um, you're perfectly safe to cook over Speedy Blaze and, and have dinner that night. Normally you can take a four pack of Speedy Blaze and it's going to cost about what a bundle of campfire wood normally does now. So, you know, if you're buying campfire wood now and you know basically what you're paying, we're going to be about the same price. The difference is that small campfire wood is probably only going to last you an hour, hour and a half. We're going to be about four hours. One of the things that we found is other states are much more restrictive, as I said, and, and Michigan is going to follow suit. I mean, right now, even a lot of private campgrounds, you cannot bring firewood into. And I think you're going to see the state crack down as well on state campgrounds, state forest campgrounds, where you're going to have to, you're not going to be able to bring firewood in um, and, and they're going to be limited on cutting firewood, um, you know, and once you're in those parks. And so because of that, we believe that Speedy Blaze is going to be a great alternative and a great answer for folks who are looking to go to those state parks or go to those state forest campgrounds. Another great idea designed by sportsmen to help protect our trees, and it's right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, we are back here again at Williams Gun Site in Davison, Michigan with gunsmith Rob Cans, and today we're going to be talking about waterfowling. Now, everyone's out there excited. You might have even started goose hunting already here in September, but we're going to talk about different stuff to do with waterfowling and starting out maybe even talk about what are some maintenance issues that waterfowlers have. There's one word, water. <laughs> water, water gets into everything. Um, we get a lot of guns that come in that are really badly rusted. Uh, most of the guns you see, you know, waterfowlers out standing around waiting for ducks and geese to come in and a lot of times the butt of the gun will get stuck into the water and this area here will get filled basically to the point where when I take it apart water runs out. Oh, wow. uh, this area is enclosed and you can't get at it without taking it apart like I got it here. Uh, so like you can see there's quite a bit of rust already started on that. I've had these so badly rusted you have to actually pull this thing out like a piece of string and replace it. Um, that's the biggest thing. Uh, the guys that have synthetic stocks, the butt stocks are hollow and those will hold water pretty much forever. So getting getting gun apart after you know you've gotten it wet and getting, getting it dried out is very important, both back there and in the rest of it. That's good info. So is there anything else to do with water falling that we need to know, like maybe shot size, patterning, that sort of thing? Yeah, patterning is actually one of the biggest things. Uh, like with turkey hunting, they're always stressing to get out and pattern your gun and make sure that it shoots where you aim. Uh, the bead is not always where the pattern ends up on the target. Uh, and with shot size, that will affect the, the, the way the pattern actually imprints on the paper, you know, how many holes, how big the holes are gaps wise on the paper, um, which makes it difficult to hit a specific object sometimes. So when you get the gun out, you try different size shots or different types of shots as well. You have the bismuth shot, you have the heavy shot and steel shot for waterfall, of course. Um, they all act differently in different chokes as well. Uh, like with steel shot, having a, a lead modified choke is the equivalent to a full choke for steel where the bismuth shot and the heavy shot works like lead still. Both of them are compressible and can be shot through tighter patterning uh, choke tubes. So trying longer choke tubes is really important. Um, also, if you do find that your gun doesn't pattern correctly uh, to where the bead points, there are other options like adjustable sights for the rib itself or even some of the holographic sights that they make nowadays we can put on the receiver to uh, make it basically like a rifle where you can sight your pattern in. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for all the tips. And uh, if you have any questions for Rob, uh, get on our social media, we'll, Facebook, Instagram, we'll kind of field some more questions there. And next time we visit with Rob, whether it's for deer hunting or waterfowling, we'll get some more gun tips from him then.
Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you join us over the next several weeks as we start into our hunting seasons. We'll have all sorts of hunting fun headed your way, as well as some great fall fishing to be had too. If you want to know where we are or where we're headed next, make sure you check us out online. Well, online is a great way to check us out. We're on the different social media platforms. You can check us out there. Of course, we're at michigandoutofdoorstv.com. Full episodes of the show there every week. And make sure that you are joining us over the next couple of weeks. I'm pretty excited about this upcoming weekend. I'm going to be doing some elk hunting and some bear hunting. Well, I'm going to have a camera in hand, but it should be some really great stories. And then next weekend, boy, it's hard to believe the youth deer season is right around the corner. Lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks. If we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By the locally owned and operated members of the Michigan Petroleum Association and the National Oil Heat Research Alliance, who provide oil heat with bioheat, a renewable fuel source designed to benefit the home and the environment. Details on the web at useoilheatmichigan.com. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at anglerquestpontoons.com. By Huron Lady River Cruises in Port Huron, offering daily sightseeing trips and private cruises for all ages. Sightseers will experience the International Blue Water Bridge, Great Lakes Freighters, the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse, and more. Huron Lady River Cruises on the web at huronlady.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden Stream, the white tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan.